Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford. And with me today, I have Christine Sauer. She's a retired physician and naturopath specializing in helping people to grow their business, live better, and thrive longer by using cutting-edge neuroscience, the brain power system, and five-dimensional brain health coaching, which I'm imagining you have that sparks a lot of questions in the listeners. So we'll get to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Christine, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Of course. Let's start at the beginning. What got you into coaching? What prompted mm-hmm. this move into the coaching business for you? Well, pretty much it was necessity because I don't know if people know my story, probably not. I was a physician in Germany and I got sick. And if you want to hear my story, go to the website www.doccharistine.com. And I tell my story there in five minutes. Basically what happened, I got sick. I went to Canada. My ex committed suicide. I ended up in the hospital, a mental hospital of all kinds. I was depressed, struggled with depression for 10 years. I could have worked again, but it would have required me to do a residency, which at that point I wasn't able to do. So then when I got myself healthy with by using the system that I now share with the world, what happened is I couldn't get a license as a physician here in Canada. And I'm stuck here in Canada because I'm married to a wonderful Canadian that is here from Halifax. <laughs> so I said, what can I do to spread the message of hope and help others get ahead in their lives, in their businesses, get their growth that they are looking for in their personal life, work life, financial lives, and then help others get growth. And so I became a coach. I studied coaching. And as many coaches, I started the naive and thought, oh, I can help everybody now. (laughs) And what happened? Exactly what happened to most beginning coaches, nothing. (laughs) Oh, I hired business coaches. Oh, yes, they know what they're doing, don't they? $10,000, poor. Nothing happened. Hmm. I created a lot of stuff, but it didn't work because I didn't have the system in place. All right. So what happened? Naive as I was, I ended up going bankrupt. Many coaches do in some point in their career. True, very true. But being the fighter I am by now, by then, I said, that's not going to stop me. So I reinvented myself and started again, in part adapting what all the coaches had told me to do. But this time I made the difference. I actually do the things because so many people, and you know that yourself, they start a course or a program and then it, they bury it on their hard drive, on their cloud. I have a lot of them in my cloud and it doesn't help you to have them in the cloud because the knowledge is all out there. It has been out there for thousands of years how to do it. Okay. The problem that people have is that they have the knowledge They can Google it. It's all out there. There's no lack of knowledge. There's too much knowledge out there. Excellent point. (laughs) But what the people lack is the connection between the knowledge and how they apply it to their life to get the results they want. And that's what every good coach does, right? Exactly. And it sounds as if you like so many other coaches journeys, you went on a very similar, similar path. You found something, you struggled in your own life, found something that changed your life uh, and want to share it (laughs) with the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like with this, you know, essentially ancient wisdom. It's like, we've always known what to do. It's just a matter of discovering how best to deliver that and to make those connections, to help other people make those connections. It's, it never seems to inspire me. And the problem in the online connected world is that we all get the imposter syndrome. We look out there, oh shit, this and that person is doing it so much better than I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. It's true. (laughs) So what can you do? Stop looking. (laughs) So speaking of what are you going to do about it, this leads very naturally into what are you doing in your coaching business right now that you would say is unique, that you don't really see many other coaches, if any other coaches doing right now? What is unique for me is that I combine a teaching, my system. Mm -hmm. I developed a system for health, which I base on my knowledge that I acquired in 40 years in healthcare as a doctor and naturopath. And then 
I make it into an individual blueprint for my clients. I haven't seen that before. And then over the next time, I drip to them daily reminders, activities, text messages, just five or 30 minute max activities that they can do. And then I measure, do they do it? Hmm. And if not, we'll hop on a session and I'll find out why. And I help them to get the motivation to actually do it. And of course, if it's not aligned with what they want, then we adjust it. I like that. So it's very, it's systematic, but also very adaptive and very hands-on without being very like pushy. You're not controlling them. You're not telling them what to do. You're just not letting them off the hook ever. <laughs> Who doesn't need sometimes a little kick in the butt? I certainly do. My husband does it for me. He says, <laughs> you're lazy. Get on your butt and do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, and we motivate ourselves badly often. We say, oh, I should do this. When I tell myself I should lose weight, what do you see? You see the deprivation. You think I can't eat what I want. Oh my God, I go on a party and everybody eats the good stuff and I can't have what I want. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel? That's a smart goal. It's bad. You don't start with a smart goal. You start with a dumb goal. I, I think that. I need to make that a motto. I'm not going to start. I'm going to stop starting with smart goals and start with dumb goals. <laughs> yeah, dumb is better to start with than smart. Yeah, because starting is better than not starting at all. Well, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs> As Lao Tzu said, journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And I added something to it because it's not complete. Hmm. Only if you take the first and all following steps in the right direction towards your goals will actually the journey get shorter. Otherwise, it gets longer. Mm -hmm. So before you actually start, you need to know what you want, your goals. And my mentor, one of my mentors, Dr. Daniel Amen, has a nice worksheet, the One Sheet Miracle. Hmm. I have it here behind my computer on the wall. What's my goals? It's all there. What do I want? What's my purpose? Mine is being a great coach, educator, presenter, guide, inspirational speaker, leader, human being, and role model. Mm -hmm. That means I'm doing what I preach as good as I can. I'm not perfect. Never was. Yeah, <laughs> I thought true. I was. <clears throat> it got me in the mental hospital with a nervous breakdown. How many people try to be perfect, afraid of failing? Most all of us do. Most all of us at one point flirt with the, at least the idea of being our perfect selves. And when we fail to meet that standard that we've created somehow in our minds, it ends up creating this vicious downward cycle, this, this vicious loop that a lot of people get stuck in and a lot of people are stuck in, which is why coaching, I feel, is such an important aspect of society yeah. now as much as it ever has been. And it's always important. And I tell my coaches, you should have a background. And some coaches have a background, say, if you have a marketing background, there's nothing wrong with it. And then you, keep, you think you can keep coach people on say losing weight and you never done it you never helped anybody else doing it uh, it's a bad idea so if you want to be a coach and you know that training coaches then you have to help them find something that aligns with their story and aligns with their background and their capabilities or nobody will hire them and they won't be effective as a coach no. it, it reminds me a lot of that classic writer's advice write what you know it's the same thing with coaching. Coach what you know. You, yeah. if, you're, if you're trying to create or step into some, some aspect, some personality that you are, are not genuinely representing yourself, that you are not genuinely are, then it's just not going to work. At no, least not, not the long term. It's, it's like when you're trying to approach people with the mindset that's not correct. When you try to sell somebody and you have the mindset, oh my God, I need this money. I need to close that person. You feel that and nobody wants to buy from you. Yeah. You know that as a, as a marketer and salesperson. Yeah. And that's so important. But there's a classic triad. Learn something, do it, teach it. Natural process. That's all. Um, that's all there is. I, wanted, I, I don't want to let this podcast end without talking at least a little bit about your business in particular. I, I feel like I could talk with you about life and coaching and everything for hours and hours and hours. 
and I bet you could do it. <laughs> so speaking more specifically, thinking in terms of the last 12 months and the next 12 months, how has your business been growing and evolving and changing? And what are your plans for how it's going to grow and evolve and change um, in the future? And for me, the last year has been a year of restructuring and growth because I noticed that my business was unsatisfactory to say the least. I make money, yes, I hold my own, that's fine, but I'm not satisfied. I wanna help more people better. And that's why I thought about what can I do to really help people in a deep way? And that's why I developed the program. That's relatively new actually on my brainandsuccess.com hmm. site. There's uh, the entry to the, it's a funnel of course, but it is a very good teaching about everything I do. And you can take it and run with it for yourself because I've decided I'm not holding anything back. What I know goes out there. It's up for you to take and make the best out of it. If you use it for your life, good for you. And the next 12 months for me will be defined by creating good content around those topics because I have a good, good knowledge and my business will grow I want to hire coaches. I want to outsource things that I know how to do, but don't like doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but as a successful person, as every successful person knows, if you start by outsourcing in a business, it won't work unless you're rich. Yeah, that's you can throw money. And I go with <laughs> what one of my other mentors, Brandon Borchard, he told me, yeah. uh, he, he said, when I started, he, he sat in his bedroom on his girlfriend's uh, apartment because he got bankrupt when he started. And he said, I decided I need to know how things work before I start outdoors. And I like, I like that approach. Mm -hmm. And it's also an approach that trains your brain because you have to learn different things. If you get stuck in only doing one thing all the time, your brain disappears, it shrivels. You want to grow your brain all your life. Mm -hmm. I'm 60. I'm proud of it. My brain is getting better every year. Mm. And I damaged it with antipsychotics and other psychiatric medicines for over 20 years before I finally said, stop. It's my life. It's my decision. I'm not a victim here. I have the responsibility to create my future. We are not defined by our past. Our past determines where we are now. And this is the moment we create our future. It's again, I know I keep coming back to the word inspiration, but it's just inspiring. It's just inspiring because pretty much every coach I talk to, and you are an, an exemplary example of this, you have such a strong personal story that you were just not content to have, own, to have begin and end with yourself. You decided this is, other people need this. I have a way to deliver it. I have ways to deliver it. It feels, and you have such a, an excellent grasp of the entire process too. The importance of, of learning before outsourcing. You know, it's like that people think of outsourcing as the releasing of a burden, but it's the giving of a gift. And you really can't give a good gift unless you know what it is. It's in the box, you know? <laughs> so that's excellent. So the, I just want to make sure that I say it one more time. The, the websites, it's brainandsuccess.com yeah. and doccristine, all one word, yeah. .com as well. DOCChristine.com. Yeah, one word. Make sure people check that out. And um, if you Google my name, Dr. Christine Sauer, it probably all will come up. There you go. That's, that, that's the key right there, the, the old SEO. Google me and you'll find me. <laughs> yeah, if you Google my name, it works pretty well. If you yeah. Google my keyword, A, I needed to outsource at some point the SEO part too. <laughs> Before we go, let's see. I want to ask you one more question. I think, let's go with this one. What do you, what do you see right now as your biggest challenge as a coach? The biggest challenge is breaking through all the noise that's going on on uh, social media and platforms. That's where we reach the most people because cold emailing is pretty much out because of the privacy rules. Mm -hmm. So, and people's attention span is constantly reduced and there's a lot of hype and nonsense out there. And to break through that sometimes is a real challenge. And nowadays it's no longer about reaching people, it's about getting their attention mm -hmm. much harder. Mm -hmm. I think you said it perfectly. Thank you so much for being on this episode of the podcast. I could, 
I could, again, like I said, I could do this for hours, but I want to be respectful of both your time and the time of our listeners. I, I do have a few long form podcasts in my weekly listening schedule, but yeah, let's, let's keep it at 20 minutes instead of two hours, at least this time. <laughs> no problem at all. So thank you very much. And thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time.